Hello, this is Michael L. Dublin Sr. with another installment of Jesus and Anger. But I'm going to detour today because of recent national events. I'm going to detour so I can share just a couple of things about uh, Brant Jean, who asked for that hug from his brother's murder. You all know the story of Botham Jean being shot in his own apartment by police officer Amber Geiger. She was given a sentence of 10 years. She had probably served about half that. But Botham's brother, Brant, said that he, he forgave her, asked her for a hug. And as a result of that, it started a firestorm around the world, but particularly in this country. I saw and heard what he said, and then I read the Facebook post. And I'll be honest with you, I was really shocked at what I thought was the viciousness of some of the responses, and especially from those who are in my fellowship, Church of Christ. There seemed to be, for many people, a remarkable ability to either not know what forgiveness means, or not to understand the impact of what really took place when he forgave her. Somehow, all of the teachings about Christ Jesus, about him forgiving our sins, kind of went out the door for some people. That there were some very strong comments about how uh, what he did was very Christ-like. But those who rejected it brought into the picture social justice issues racial issues, white supremacy, and then many brought in a, um, a position that you don't ask or don't give forgiveness without asking for repentance. And that bothered me because that is not the teaching of Christ. And the reality then is that there are always going to be social justice, injustices, the racial, all of the issues that we have. But can a person actually say, I belong to Christ Jesus, this is what I believe, and this is what I live by, without being excoriated by thousands upon thousands who have a total different idea, who see Christ differently, and who bring in all of the social ills associated with African Americans in this country to bear in a situation like this, to speak for all 40 million of us, at least 40 million, and to be irate to be irritated, uh, to, to put down African Americans uh, because he forgave as Christ would have him to do. The whole concept of Christianity is based on one's willingness to forgive. Not based on the other issues. Yes, we have issues in this country, to say the least. That's the understatement of the year. But my concern is, do you realize when that verdict was read and he asked for that hug, that who you are actually came out. Your thoughts, your core beliefs, and if it did not align with Christ, then Christ still must be formed in you. Racial hatred, racial bitterness, injustice, all of those things have a tremendous impact on all of our lives. But that's why we became Christians. Not because those things will go away, but we could deal with those issues and deal with it in a way that we individually, our churches, our faith group, our fraternity, and all could come out on top and have a strategic way in each local community to address these issues. It's a much broader topic than that, but here's what I'm saying today. Your reaction to that tells you what is really on your heart. What was revealed? Where is your heart? Is it centered in and anchored in Christ Jesus, our religion, politics, and all of our negative experiences? Check your heart out and make sure that your heart speaks the language of Christ Jesus so that when you speak to others, you can speak a painful truth because it is painful to deal with forgiving somebody under those circumstances and all of the other things that may come afterwards. But at the end of the day, you represent Christ. Has he transformed you enough 
that you can get past your initial shock, disappointment, hurt, and still honor Christ Jesus, who said, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And I trust that you know that no one knows exactly what they were doing, even when they were doing the things that they were doing. Look a little deeper, check your heart out, and stand before God this day as one who proudly represents Christ Jesus. And for those who are not Christians, if you've taken the time to listen to this at this point, where is your heart? What are you doing in your local community? Who are you working with to bring about justice? What specifically will happen as a result of your going into the communities and affecting change because you want justice? God bless you in your search and everything that you are and everything that you do.